<laughs> okay. <clears throat> In this video, we'll talk about negative aspect of dual core schedules that I absolutely feel like you need to know before attempting them. You may actually develop a nasty disorder from attempting them if the wrong things happen. Stay tuned. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasic.net. The community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So back to the video, what's this magical phenomenon that I'm talking about? Is polyphasic sleeping actually dangerous? <laughs> okay, are you ready? Are you ready? The thing is that some people who attempt dual core schedules are going to unlock their naturally segmented tendencies as an effect from it. Which doesn't sound too bad, uh, but when you think about it, it can actually be quite detrimental. This can also happen on tricore schedules, but for the sake of not saying dual core or tricore or quad core schedules, which sounds really chunky, I'm just going to be talking about dual core schedules from now on. Anyways, let me further illustrate what I mean by people unlocking their naturally segmented tendencies with an example. Okay, you're a teenager who has experienced some sleep issues as a child, but they have disappeared by themselves and now you're able to sleep throughout the whole night without issues. You're certain that you're more aligned to every man's schedules, but you choose to attempt to do a course schedule due to scheduling issues with the every man's schedules. Or something similar. Well, you're hardcore and stick to the schedule for a month, but then you're forced to switch back to a monophasic schedule because you can't stand going to bed at 10 in the evening anymore. But during this time, something has happened to your body. When you try to sleep for a full 8 hours, you're no longer able to do it and you wake up after sleeping for 3 hours. This continues day after day with you waking up energized in the middle of the night, even when you have an alarm early in the day, which results in you building up a lot of sleep deprivation. Your naturally segmented tendencies have awoken from being exposed to your body's desired way of sleeping. So that sounds rough, but let's talk about this phenomenon a bit. First let me say that during the 2018 polyphasic sleep survey, no one who filled in the survey had this happen to them, so it seems like a very rare phenomenon. Some people may experience intermittent wakes for a few months after switching back to monophasic sleep, but they usually subside and you don't have to worry about it too much. But there are actually sometimes people who will for real awaken their naturally segmented tendencies from doing this. For your information, we released a video previously on naturally segmented people and how to live with the condition. And if you feel like you want to learn more about this background information, you can check that video out. It will be linked in the description. But is it really so bad to be awoken to like awoken your naturally segmented tendencies? Well, it might be for some people. If you have to wake up early for your job and also want to go on late dinners with your friends in the evening, it's simply not going to work out that you spend time awake in the middle of the night. Plus, if you're living uh, free of sleep issues, it may actually be very mentally taxing for you to realize that you have something to cope with, that you're going to need to cope with. At least for the time being. You get the gist of it. There are negative things with it and it can affect people. Okay, let's pretend that the damage is done and you've accidentally become a naturally segmented sleeper. How do you deal with it? As I see it, there are two ways to handle this situation. Either you live with it and continue a segmented schedule, which actually seems to make people more comfortable with their bodies than before. Or you decide to fix your issue and actively work to force your body back into a monophasic schedule. Let's start by talking about the first solution. If you awaken your naturally segmented lifestyle, it's because your body was actually naturally segmented in the first place. You have just suppressed it or taught yourself to sleep for a full night. Which means that you aren't functioning optimally uh, when you are sleeping throughout the whole night. 
and allowing yourself to interrupt your sleep will actually make you more productive and will cause you to function better with less tiredness dips and just being more comfortable in your own body. So I suggest that you switch to a segmented schedule with two 3.5 hour cores or a quad core zero schedule with four 1.5 hour cores instead, depending how frequently uh, and after how much time you wake up in the night. But maybe this solution isn't for you. You have too much to do and then can't afford to do this schedule. Well, in that case, the second option will be might be more maybe more suited to your specific situation, where you teach yourself to stick to your monophasic sleep schedule instead. And I want to start by saying that uh, you can do it. It's going to be hard, but it's possible. I mean, up until now, you've tricked your body into suppressing its naturally segmented habits. Uh, when you were a kid, you were taught into sleeping without a nap and perhaps even taught not to split your sleep anymore. So it's definitely possible to accomplish it again. The way you pull this off is by utilizing the sleep box method to restrict the time you spend in bed until your sleep onset shortens and your body is forced to abandon the interruptions in order to get enough sleep to function optimally. I've talked about this concept more in my video Insomnia Cure, uh, using polyphasic sleep to cure insomnia, where I compared polyphasic sleeping to the cognitive behavioral therapy method for insomnia. Uh, and you can watch this video if you're interested in learning more about the sleep restriction box. Even uh, if you may not settle for using polyphasic sleeping to achieve the same goal. That said, uh, you can do an everyman schedule to achieve the same effect. Which may be mentally easier for you since you will be able to nap during the day. Which alleviates tiredness that will certainly build up with the sleep box method. If you choose to go that route, uh, be sure to stick your schedule really hard. Don't switch to Everyman 2 and Dual Core 2 a week later, followed by Siesta, Triphasic and so on. When you want to re-establish your sleep routine, you need to adhere to your schedule. And if you jump from schedule to schedule, it's going to be much harder to succeed with stopping the sleep interruptions. Great, now you know about how to treat or live with the situation, but what's the verdict? Should you go for the preventative method that I usually preach and just stay away from dual core schedules? Well, in my opinion, no. As I said, one, this is a very rare thing to happen. And two, if it does happen to you, it's going to allow you to function more optimally than before. So I would not be overly cautious uh, about following dual core schedules for this reason, but I wanted to highlight the possibility of this happening to you and how to fix it. Okay, that's all for today. Do you like this video? Give it a like. Did you enjoy having me talk about this? Subscribe for more videos. Remember to use a dark period when you're on a dual core schedule to let your circadian rhythm remain stable. The link to the free dark period course will be in the description of this video. Anyways, stay safe and remember to have pleasant naps people!